Hey guys and gals, it's Mike White with Baby Monkey Studios and X Car Guru. Just here to give you a quick tip on using custom CSS in your X Card 5 store. Okay, so today, um, you know, I'm helping out a uh, forum member. I'm also having a little trouble with my voice. Please, please forgive me for that. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, custom CSS, uh, how to use it in your X Card store. And in this respect, we're actually using it on a table. Um, you know, I'm not a fan of tables, and I'm going to go over that later because, uh, you know, I could talk about that for about an hour. So let's get right down to it. Uh, what we're trying to do is remove these borders that we see around this table. So, you know, I'm using Chrome. I'm going to inspect element, and uh, it's very obvious. Applied to this TD here, I've got a border, and I've also got a border top. So removing those two uh, fixes it right up. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we obviously need to like copy this code. I don't know if this is coming from Bootstrap or, or where it's coming from, but this class definition is very specific. And uh, I'm just going to move that uh, right over here. I've added this table via the front page. I've gone to Tools and Source Code and added that and that's you can find that under catalog front page and now I'm going to uh, look and feel and then custom CSS okay so right now uh, use custom CSS is not checked so I guess there's a whole bunch of CSS like plugged in here just you know probably to get you started I uh, don't know what else it could be for but I'm just gonna wipe all that out uh, it's not being applied to my store at currently uh, because this use custom CSS is not even checked. So I'm just going to get rid of all that. Then I'll just check that box, use custom CSS. And I'll paste in that class definition. Now it's all messy. It's all in one line. And that's not very legible. It's probably good for um, download size. But not very legible. So I'll just uh, backspace it here. Wherever it has the uh, you know a comma. So this is like one definition. Uh, two definitions and three definitions. So it's really three different classes that are going to be, you know, where this is going to be applied. Well, they're not really classes, they're elements. So that's for another day to talk about. All right, and so basically I just want to say border zero and border top zero. And this might not work, but it's my first attempt. And we'll just save that. Wait for that to reload. The site's running a little slow today, I can tell. It's just on a shared hosting platform, so I'm not surprised. Okay, it says the cache has been cleared and the file is saved. So let's go to the front side and we'll refresh. And now you can see it's actually got the right definitions. And you can see it pulling in my border zero, border top zero, and there's no um, borders anymore. So if I were to uncheck these, the old uh, styles would, would come in. So now, you know, I've shown you how to use the custom CSS. I want to talk a little bit about CSS. Uh, CSS has a hierarchy. Uh, I'm not going to even try to say the word hierarchical call because I can't say that <laughs> but um, you know basically you have your base styles uh, you know your style sheets that come in uh, you know from modules they come in from the the core of Xcart bootstrap I think is under there somewhere all these different CSS files but the custom CSS it sits on top of everything so you know that custom CSS file is processed last and the way CSS works is the last definition that it gets is the one that it respects the most. So since I, you know, even though there's those other definitions above it, uh, whether they're above it called, you know, further up in the page, or if they're above it, you know, when they get all wrapped up into one CSS file and aggregated, either way, uh, this custom CSS gets tacked on the very last, and so it takes priority over everything that comes before it. Okay, well that's all about custom CSS. Now I'm going to start bashing on tables. So tables, you know, are good for tabular data. 
and uh, if you have a small data set that you want to put uh, in tabular data, uh, that's fine, you know. Um, but in this case, the way it's being used is, is absolutely wrong. Uh, this is a table. It's got a, um, a height of 96 px, which is odd, a width of 614 px, and that's a style that's just been added directly in. It's not been put in a CSS class. It's actually just an on-page style, which I never liked that. And then also the width has been set uh, to 614. So it's just, you know, it, it is a fixed width element. And I'll show you exactly the problem you're going to have with that. When you start scrolling down, uh, that element is not going to be able to be collapsed. So when you get small enough, let's see if we can find it. You know, here's here's where it uh, is just not going to work for mobile. You can see they've been numbered. Looks like they're misnumbered. One, three, five, six, and um, you know those those are not going to go mobile at all. I mean, table elements are really quite terrible for any kind of layout of any kind. I mean, if I could avoid uh, tables 100%, I'd be a happy man. And um, you know, it's just it's just not a it's just not a good practice at all. Okay, that I thought I could talk for an hour about that, but you know, I, I've shown you the problem with it. It it doesn't it's not responsive, and uh, it should never be used for layout purposes. You know, you want to do a grid of images, don't use a table. Uh, use an inline block element. You know, um, do anything but tables, and and study CSS so that you don't need to use tables. Uh, now there is there are, is a time and place for tables, and it's when you're actually displaying a grid on a non-responsive page, and you need to have column headings. Um, but you know, for the front side of your website, there's always a better way. Uh, just just avoid the table at all costs. So you can see it holding the page open here. See how it's it's off the rest of the page. I mean, it's just gonna it's just terrible. The biggest problem is they just don't wrap to the next line. All right, that's all the bashing I've got. Hopefully everybody learned something from this. And uh, until next time, I'm Mike White signing off and wishing you the best of luck in your e-commerce efforts. Have a great day.